puppy a hound. It's the new tuning for now. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, the morning prayers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now you're going to make me laugh all the way through those prayers. That's not fair. Oh, you're too much. <laughs>
with all the evil, war, and so many places. Give thanks with friends and family facing the ravage of cancer. I cannot rejoice or give thanks for these. We can rejoice in knowing our Savior Jesus. We can give thanks for the grace that heals our spirit and brings us together as Christian friends and believers. Hallelujah. of looking at gratitude and thankfulness and how that impacts our lives and the reality of because sometimes we face horrible moments in life and where does gratitude find its way even in a world where I look at my grandchildren and I just wonder what am I giving you but thankfulness is the power of transformative growth of God's grace active and blessing 
So as we worship today, I'm going to invite the ushers to offer a connection card because who you are is important and connecting to you means everything for us to support you in your journey of faith. Notice there's prayer cards that you can lift up prayer concerns or go online and let us know that we can lift them up in worship and even in staff in midweek. It is a blessing to welcome you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ drive us to a place of profound gratitude in the midst of any circumstance that we face. God bless you as we worship today.
unthankfulness and grateful living. you're not. Let us pray. Divine Creator, in this moment of reflection, we come before you with hearts filled with gratitude for the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for the gift of life, for the love that surrounds us, and for the abundance of resources that sustain us each day. We are grateful for the beauty of creation and the opportunities that lie before us. Yet even in our gratitude, we are mindful of the injustices that exist in our world. We see the pain of those who suffer from oppression, discrimination, and inequality. We acknowledge the wounds inflicted by injustice, both seen and unseen, and we pray for healing and reconciliation. We pray now the prayer requests that are on our hearts. We pray this morning for Josh, an 18-year-old boy whose mom just died and whose dad is dying. Josh, um, we just pray that you would hold him and bring him grace. And Anne Marie, whose dad has just died. And for Eric, may he find kindness and peace in his divorce. Prayers of joy for Deb Love who has moved back to Milwaukee. Prayers for a student having surgery soon. Prayers for a longtime friend who has passed away. Prayers for Ann Peer, who passed away this week.
prayers for peace in the Middle East. Prayers for Loretto, who's been injured in a fall. Her neighbor's dog knocked her over. Prayers for John Worsham and his family on the passing of his wife, Diane Ways. May God's comfort and peace be with all of them. From Kari Karth, my grandpa is in the ICU not doing well and went into septic shock last night into emergency surgery. And my grandma is also not in the best of health. We're doing our best to manage everything. Prayers would be appreciated. Prayers for all cancer patients, children, or adults. Prayers for my friend's son who is struggling with mental illness. Lord, these are the prayers of your people. Help us, O oh divine source of compassion, to be agents of change in a world where injustice persists. Give us the courage to speak out against oppression, the strength to stand in solidarity with the marginalized, and the wisdom to work towards a more just and equitable society. May our gratitude inspire us to action, and may our actions be guided by love and justice. And now we offer this prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we've been exploring the, the meaning of gratitude in our lives and to live a life of gratitude and what's the impact? What does our faith say to us and how does it give us guidance in the midst of challenges that we face in our life? It just seems so challenging when you enter into this kind of focus that uh, especially in terms of stewardship and how the church can be agents of grace and love and mercy and, uh, and yet we are... Um, in the midst of this, finding ourselves confronting some challenges of lost loved ones and a war potential and the Middle East and the tension in Ukraine, and we're just observing this. In the midst of it, somehow, we're finding that gratitude and thankfulness becomes our strength. Not easy to do. I couldn't help but just think uh, this morning the importance of reminding ourselves um, what we learn from Jesus in terms of dealing with these issues. And um, we, of course, uh, follow a Christ who said to us to love our enemies. And that's upsetting enough, isn't it? I mean, it's enough to um, deal with a coworker who is a challenge or sit at the table of Thanksgiving with Uncle Harry. I hope there's no Uncle Harry's. Um, someone fill in the blank, that's a challenge, but today, you know, we're dealing with reality that our world's struggling to, to live together in peace. What did we lose from kindergarten to share our, our toys? Uh, and we know that there's deep-rooted hatred, deep-rooted resentment, deep-rooted desire for retaliation. But our, our Savior said, love your enemies, because he knew retribution and retaliation even an eye for an eye, pretty soon everybody's just blind. 
And that's why I think he called in in the Sermon on the Mount, he said, blessed are the peacemakers, because this is hard stuff. It's easier, it's weaker to respond with aggression and hatred and death. And I think that's why Jesus, in the moment of his arrest, said, put away the sword and took the difficult way of accepting rejection and hatred. But we just celebrated that even though in the midst of Friday, when it seems like evil is getting its way, Sunday comes. The power that Jesus taught us about healing and recognition and reconciliation and understanding the kingdom of God is a, a, God, is a kingdom that's that based on compassion and mutual care and acceptance and reaching out to the marginalized and hated. Even phrases like turn the other cheek, to this kind of compassion that is so hard to understand. And so as we face the challenges we do today, I, I can't but help go back to Mr. Rogers. Look for the helpers. You will find people who are helping because they operate out of a centeredness in God that seems to show compassion and care. So today, I pray that we can, as we focus in our text, can find ways in which we acknowledge the need to find at the center of our being our strength to be a life centered on thankfulness, gratitude. The text for today, the first comes from Thessalonians uh, 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray continually. Now, those are two hard ones to begin with. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Then let's take a look at Philippians. We'll jump right to that and just see here, um, Paul's writing to a church he has great affection for and he's writing from prison. This letter of joy is written in the context of a, a prison potential crucifixion even for him. Don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all of your requests to God in your prayers and petitions along with giving thanks. Then, the peace of God that exceeds all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. The peace of God that exceeds all understanding. And sometimes that's used to say, well, there's no way to know, so you just got to step out in blind faith. This peace, why it exceeds understanding, is based on the reality that in our lives, we're constantly struggling for peace. And our circumstances are constantly telling us that there's less. But this understanding, God says, I give you something that exceeds that. And that's our focus. I, um, I was going to a restaurant, and it just amazed me. I think I even shared about it. I, I went to the Bay restaurant, and I, they are not paying me anything but I want to pay them a tribute of gratefulness because when I went to eat there, the waitress treated with such gracious kindness, so exceedingly that it lifted my spirit. Been around that? Customer service is still alive. And it was a beautiful thing. A few blocks down from there, recently, I walked into the, as a fast food, and the person that was going to take my order, was standing, leaning against the counter, facing the other direction, playing solitaire on his phone. And I stood there, and I wondered, well, what's my next response? And then finally someone said, hey, there's a customer. He turns, and he said, yeah. Didn't even look at me, right? You know how that sets you off, and, and all of a sudden you're kind of frustrated by the experience, and you're wondering, what, what's going on here? And... Um, then I began to realize the connection, I think, from a sense of gratitude that drives your working 
And the, the strong connection between um, the quality of sense of relationship between a customer um, and the employee as they work, gratitude enhances a lot of things in the relationship. Gratitude enhances service attitude. I mean, when you're thankful, you have a positive spirit, right? And you're more inclined to care about the customer and kindness, being patient and respectful if you're driven by gratitude, welcoming, creating an enjoyable experience, bring satisfaction and hoping for loyalty. Gratitude all seems to foster empathy. The waitress in the first experience just somehow knew how I was doing it and wanted to encourage me, was listening, was seeing me. Not the experience in the second situation. Empathy as it strengthens this relationship and builds over time and connection. There's a sense of gratitude creates excellence. I care about you. I want to do it well. I want to exceed your expectation, your experience as you come here. A thankful spirit motivates service beyond the average. It goes beyond to care and support. And when we experience that, it changes us in the moment, doesn't it? When in service is infused with, with gratitude, it provides even a deeper sense of purpose and fulfillment for everyone. And gratitude fosters a culture of appreciation. When you're appreciated as an employee, when you're appreciated as a customer, all this sense creates and supports a culture, builds morale and teamwork and sense of connection. And certainly gratitude builds customer loyalty. I want to turn back, and I will to the one place. But then I began to think, thankfulness, gratitude, appreciation, how does it drive the ministry of our church? And I want to be careful because I don't want you to think that you're the customer today. Ever been to a church that see that the sign as you leave the sanctuary says, now you're entering the mission field? There's a sense that God is calling us to be agents of grace and mercy and change. We ourselves, where do we find gratitude and grace to guide us and to build in us a sense of connection? And we begin to see this sense in Thessalonians about this attitude. The apostle exhorts them to rejoice always. And that's daunting when we face struggles and war and hurt and death. But when we begin to understand that this sense of rejoicing this sense of being able to connect it with a continual sense of prayer. I mean, we can say that that means, oh, we're Pollyanna, right? We're always happy. That's what it means. But then we launch the ministry and life of Jesus. Remember on the cross? God, why have you forsaken me? There's moments of stress and frustration and loneliness and loss. But somehow in the midst of that, Jesus had this sense of connection that was the rock bed of his movement forward. There's a sense that, uh, that Paul's trying to create this sense of life is finding its meaning in the worship and aspirations of God's presence. Every day becomes itself our prayer, according to Carl Reiner, a priest and theologian. Every day must become itself a prayer. That sense of worship and connection with the divine is what guides us. We're not confused to think that I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation at work and at the same time I'm giving them a presentation, I'm doing the Lord's Prayer in the back of my mind, right? It's deeper than that. And maybe that's the call for us today is to hear these texts from Paul and Thessalonians and then to the Church of Philippi, the sense that the gratitude runs deep, deep into our very existence. It isn't caught in the shallows of circumstance. It isn't swept away by the light things and even the horrific things that surround us, but bedrock deep within our souls is a sense that we have an existence that cannot be moved, an existence that overcomes the death on the cross. The existence that allows us to know that the stone was rolled away. The last word is never the worst. The hope 
Philippians says, Do, don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all the requests to God in your prayers and petitions. This connection with the strength of gratitude and connection is tied to prayer. In Philippians, it starts earlier. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Do you know that song? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Okay, then sing it with me. Let's, let's give it a shot. See what happens. I'm making this up. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Do you know the second phrase? Goes, rejoice, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Choir, you're doing great. We're going to do the round. I know. This is going to be tough. All right? So down here, keep us going, guys. We're going to start, and then I'll carry you through. We'll see what happens. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always again. We're going to start there. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Well done. The power of connecting. Essential existence. Yes, well done. That central existence. It doesn't, Pollyanna, it doesn't ignore the reality that there's war and tension. It empowers us to know at the bedrock of our being there is an empty grave. And it empowers us to face the injustices with grace and mercy. Following Christ and the needs of the world. Don't be anxious. I know this is hard. Some of us find anxiety, excessive worry, fatigue, irritability, panic attacks, paranoia, poor concentration, restlessness, sleep disturbances, all of these things and, and just take away the life God intends for us. And some of us have serious cha challenges with anxiety. And I don't want to belittle that or not find the depth of how it can be so hurtful. But I pray that we can somehow find that bedrock along with the therapy and the support and the meditation that we need but in the midst of that, even research shows that spirituality is a central role in, in our ability to deal with our anxieties in life. Because somehow at the bedrock, the Lord is with us always. There's an exercise that they give out, five things. I kind of like it because it's the senses. Five things you can see. Your hands, the sky, the sun, a plant. Remember we talk about... Um, to with Jones and his having a celebration lens in life and looking for the beauty, looking for all that's good. Five things you can see. How about four things that you can feel? A leaf, the ground, a soccer ball, a hand of a friend. Three things you can hear, the wind or children's laughter, your own breath. Two things that smell, fresh cut grass. Oh my goodness, Lord, here we go. Cutting the grass, coffee. One thing to taste, a mint. The fresh air, the Lord is near. There is hurt, there's injustice, and it demands our attention. But at the bedrock of our existence is an attitude that we choose thankfulness. And that's why Paul's writing. You get to decide. And for some of this, is, this is hard work. It's not simple or easy. But I invite us all to be active participants in living a life that chooses thankfulness and gratitude. Moving from focusing on what we lack and being appreciative of the abundance that's around us, to see it, to allow our sense to embrace it, because, you see, gratitude is a perspective. It is a choice. And I pray that we could find that choice in God today. One pastor says, gratitude is the ability to experience life as a gift. The choice of thankfulness is a powerful spiritual discipline. And it can transform our lives and our relationship. Not just businesses, but churches, too. Have you gone to a church and experienced an ungrateful congregation? Ouch. Right? 
I'll never forget. I don't know why this has come up, sorry. But I can remember I was a student pastor, and I went to the church, and my wife came there early, and she sat down right there. And you can almost know what's going to happen next. When the people who sit there and own that spot, they stood and turned at her and stared at her. There's no thankfulness in that. May God be honored in the choices we make. May it be the bedrock that sustains us when life, on the sea of life, we're lapped around by the injustice and hurt and the pain. So, I wasn't pointing at you, Russ. That, that's not you. I, is that your... Anyway. Um, but <laughs> Paul, sorry. Paul gives us a sense of rejoice, always find it at our center of being because this world has enough to be wary about. We have a message of hope and grace to rejoice and entrust in God and let prayer guide us to experience in the fullness that life intends. Don't be anxious. Bring your request to God. Share it with a friend. Help us be listening and caring. I'm going to challenge this church to create an umbrella where everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome, not just Democrats, okay? <laughs> not just Republicans. May we be the instrument of God's grace in a world so easily finds itself separating us. Let us choose thankfulness for it. It changes our whole outlook. And that's the bedrock of our meaning and purpose. That's how we live into God's grace more fully. Let us pray. Holy God, the challenges of being thankful people, the challenge of being Easter people who recognize that life is one, love wins. And so often we live as if it doesn't. Renew in us a right spirit. Guide any of us who are struggling with anxiety or anything that can separate us from this life that can be filled with more meaning and purpose, grace around them, people around them. Not more guilt or shame, but the possibilities of seeing and feeling and touching and healing in ways that comes from your presence. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. And may we as a church find ways we can honor you and that we steward our lives. There is work to be done and the possibilities are endless. In Jesus we pray. Amen. We have the blessing of hearing uh, a stewardship moment from people who have been around this church for a while and remind us of God's grace being at work. Thanks, Tom and Susie. Good morning. I'm Susie Webster, and Tom and I have been members here at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay for 38 years. Like Peggy and Bill, who spoke last week, we raised our two children here and included baptism, confirmation, and one of their weddings. This year's stewardship campaigns, campaign's theme is gratitude for the faith community we have here at UMC WFB. As I contemplated what to share, I decided to use the letters in the word gratitude to share what the church has given us over the years. G, generosity. The members of the church has all, have always been generous to each other and the world beyond. We were the benefactors of this generosity when our house flooded and two basement walls collapsed in our first year of membership. Kind individuals generously gave their money and items to help us through this stressful event, really not knowing who we were. R, relationships. We have so many wonderful relationships that have, we have developed and nurtured over the years. The real friends have been here supporting us in bad times and good and with their prayers and presence. A, action. Faith in action. We as members of this church are the hands and feet of Christ as we live out our faith and missions. We have so many opportunities to help in our church, in our community, and in our world. In our church, we have helped with children and programming, been camp counselors, sung and played in choirs, worked in the kitchen, and volunteered in this office, and served on committees. In our community, we have worked in the meal programs, sold pumpkins, helped with spring and fall cleanup for the elderly. In our world, we have packed for food, Feed My Starving Children, gone on Appalachian Service Project mission trips, and financially supported church group mission trips to Central America. T, Trinity. 
In my mind, the church's trinity is worship, prayer, and music. Worship is meaningful and thought-provoking. Our members' prayer life is phenomenal. When prayers are requested, I know they are taken from this place and raised to our Lord by many individuals. Our prayer praying community has gotten us through a lot. And our music program has always been one of my most uplifting parts of our church life. From our choir director's explanations and interpretation of the words we sing, to the sounds of the organ, soloists, instrumentalists, bells, and choirs, to the congregation joined in song, music fills my heart with hope and joy. I, for intergenerational. Ours is a church family with multi-generational interactions. Some of our fondest memories, when our children were young, were participating in musicals and Journey to Bethlehem as a family, with members ranging in age from two to their 70s. The bonds formed between us and the youth, and between Mike and Christy and senior members of the church, were life-changing and heartwarming. So special were these relationships that when our dear friend Bob Nye passed away while Christy was living in Texas, she desperately wanted to come home for the celebration of life. T, transformative. Our participation in the life of the church has transformed our lives in many ways. We have been cared for and cared for others. We have served and given to others, all of which have brought us great joy. We have studied and learned God's teachings. We give thanks daily for the blessings God has given us and share those blessings with others. I believe we have become better people, transformed, living as God intended us to. You, understanding of God's word. We have gleaned a better understanding of God's word as we have heard meaningful sermons and studied the Bible in various classes over the years. Listening to and discussing God's word always brings a new perspective and enlightening insight on how it can be applied to our daily lives. D, dynamic. Our faith community is ever-changing and evolving. We have seen building additions and transformations, pastors and staff come and go, worship times and formats altered, visions and plans for our church's mission be modified to meet the changing world. All this keeps us relevant and vibrant in, in the lives of our members and in the community around us. E, everything comes from God. The blessings of this church family are many and they all come from God. I attended this church at ages three through six when my father was an associate pastor. When Tom and I looked for a house, we wanted it to be on the North Shore so we could raise our family in this church. God had a plan and provided us for us to live and grow in this church. We are forever thankful to God for everything he has given us and is giving us here. Good morning, I'm Tom Webster. Susie has eloquently laid out how this church, its members, and its staff have been a cornerstone for our family. It has brought us lifelong friends, memories, and a place to build our faith and serve God. It has been there for us in good times and celebrations, as well as difficult and challenging times. But how did we get to this point? While Susie has been active in the United Methodist Church, since she was a child, the same cannot be said for me. My family did not go to church. God and religion were seldom, if ever, discussed around the dinner table. So from my perspective, church was a non-starter. But as many of the husbands can relate to, things changed when Susie and I got married. Church was important to Susie. So I begrudgingly agreed to start attending church at Whitefish Bay. It was not a smooth transition. Sundays at times were a battle, and discussions concerning financial support were at times very heated. But then something happened. As Susie touched on in her talk, as Susie touched on in her talk, in night but in 1986, our home was nearly destroyed by flooding. We had been in the house for a year. We were young, and we had very little money. So what were we going to do? But then out of nowhere, all these church members came forward. They provided support, advice, guidance, and financial assistance. It was amazing. But I'm thinking, who are these people? 
they don't know us. What do they get gain from all of this? As I considered all that we endured and the support from strangers, it was like a switch being turned on. I finally began to understand this whole church thing. It wasn't about self-interest. It was about helping others, doing the right thing, following a path that God has laid before you, and the faith in trusting and knowing God is always with you in this journey. I began to realize it wasn't about me. It was about church and God. Now I fast forward to today. Much has changed. Two grown, successful children, two amazing grandchildren. I also have a faith and a knowledge that has grown exponentially. What hasn't changed is that I still have an amazing wife beside me and a church that provides me with continued opportunities to grow my faith, a place to feel at peace, and opportunities to serve God through service and to be a willing financial supporter. For our family, Whitefish Bay Methodist Church is home. We have been truly blessed being longtime member, members of this faith community. We have also been blessed to have been able to give back with our time, talents, and treasures. Giving to our church has always been a priority to us. When we were a young family, it was a challenge, but yet it was important to do so because we were receiving so much. In our professional years, we were delighted to make gifts to the operational budget as well as capital campaigns. Now in retirement, we continue to make our financial support of this church a priority. Thankful that we are able to do so. We hope you all will prayerfully consider how you can support our church with your time, your talents, and your treasures. Our hearts are indeed filled with extreme gratitude for the faith community we have here at United Methodist Church Whitefish Bay. Thank you. Thank you, Tom and Susie. What a gift to us. Um, I want to go to that church. Oh, I do. <laughs> May God be honored. Now we give our tithes proportion to our income that God can be honored and people blessed. And then we can know the joy of gratitude that changes our lives. May the ushers wait upon us. Be mindful today, too, that um, you could add designated gifts toward the meal programs that Whitefish Bay is so actively involved in as well.
opportunity for us to continue to live out of our gratitude and faith and love and just a reminder of some things that are coming up. Um, we'll continue our sermon series. We're going to talk about overflowing generosity. What does that mean in the context of our lives um, as people of faith? Uh, be mindful of how we can feed the starving children program. Excellent opportunity to step in, especially if you haven't participated or had an opportunity to do too much in uh, mission beyond the local church. It's a great event and it continues to need support financially, so consider that. And Star Factor coming up on uh, April 27th and 28th, 27th Saturday at 5 during our normal worship service. And then, of course, on Sunday the 28th, we'll have one service at 10. So um, if you come at 9 thinking there's a service at 9, that gives you an entire hour for prayer. Isn't that cool? So anyway, we're looking forward to the children participating and celebrating together. Uh, so we invite you to be part of that. After each of those performances is a meal, a chili uh, dinner that's intended to support the mission trip of the youth. And those are life-changing. It's a huge, important investment, so consider that as well. I think I got through that. At this time, I'd like to invite you to stand as you're able for the sending forth. May the Spirit of God be upon you to renew you, to remind you of your sacred worth. And let every soul, every child of God around the globe know that they too are of sacred worth. And may we live in a way of thankfulness and gratitude that allows us to be compassionate and caring. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.